In this video, I want to show you how to install cement board for a tile shower and waterproof it. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. This channel's all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring the bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So without further ado, let's get started. Some important details about cement board that you need to know before you get started is it comes in half inch and quarter inch sheets for the most part and typically they're three foot by five foot in size and there's different brands there's hardy backer there's perma base which that's what this product is and then there's dura rock and there's i'm sure some others out there but those are the most common and they all function the same they just give you a place to install the tile too so you can't install a tile over sheetrock in a tile shower that's definitely going to break down over time and you definitely don't want to do that so definitely use cement board so now that you know that, you need to know that you got to install half inch sheets on walls because that's going to be a little stronger as a backer. And now a quarter inch is fine to install on the floor because you got your subfloor as a backer. So now that we went over some important details, let's go ahead and start installing this. In my last video, you seen me install this shower pan. So I really want to make sure it's protected. So what I do, I go ahead and put a piece of pasteboard down or cardboard, and then I take a piece of sheathing, just scrap sheathing, and always cut it to the size of the shower pan. So that way it gives me a surface that can have something drop on it and not break. So I don't want to have it drop directly on this shower pan because it could crack it. The standard length of a tub and shower is five foot. And that's what this one is as well. And that's why the cement board comes in five foot lengths. So if you start in the back of the shower, you wouldn't have to cut the first sheets if you install them on the back first. Now, if you stall them on the sides first, it's gonna shrink down that back to where you're gonna to have to cut a little bit off each one. So that's why I always start on the back of the shower. The items you'll need to install the cement board is wallboard adhesive. And in this case, I'm just using heavy duty liquid nails. And this is the larger tube, the 28 ounce. The next thing you're gonna need is the inch and five eighths cement board screws. And these can be found in my Amazon store. The link is in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I get a small commission, but it's an extra cost to you and it helps support the channel. And you're gonna to wanna to get the inch and a quarter if you're doing quarter inch cement board onto the floor. And then you're gonna need an impact driver or a drill to install the screws and you're gonna need a caulk gun for the wallboard adhesive. What I like to do because I work by myself is get my sheet of cement board and I'll measure over to the first stud. So it looks like about 12 and a quarter. And then what I'll do, I'll go ahead and put my layout, 16 on center is what my stud spacing is. And then what I'll do, I'll do the same about the center. So that way I'll have a good reference to where my stud's gonna be. And then what I do is I'll take my impact driver and a backer board screw and put a screw in the center of each stud. So that way when I hold the board up there, I can just anchor it. But again, I always do this before I put the adhesive on the wall. So that way there's no delay between time I put the adhesive on the wall and the cement board. So as you can see, the screw is started, but I do not have it sunk all the way. So that way it's ready to go when I lift the board up to the wall. This part's pretty simple. All we gotta do is take our wall board adhesive and just go ahead and run it down each stud. Always put a good liberal amount on because this stuff holds more than you think. So I don't go down farther than what the piece of cement board I'm getting ready to install goes down because we don't want it setting up before our next piece is ready. For this next part, I recommend having a helper, but I'm a little short staffed today, so it's just me. So I got my impact driver clipped on the side of my tool belt. I'm just gonna lift this cement board up into place and then tack it on with my pre-started screws. All right, now that it's up there, it's holding fine with the few screws in it. Now I'm gonna go through and put a screw about every five or six inches across all the studs. For half inch cement board on the walls, I recommend about 30 cement board screws per sheet. And for the floor, I recommend about 60 screws per sheet. When you install the screw, be sure not to sink it to where it's plumb out of sight, just enough to get right below the surface, just like you see here. It's your preference whether you want to start from the ceiling and work down or from the floor and work up. 
This bottom piece is going to need rip down to fit in the place. So if we take a measurement, in this case, it looks like we need about a 33 inch piece. And also, I want you to take note of the lip on the shower base. I'm going to actually cut just a little bit out of the back to go over this lip because if you don't, that cement board will come down and then kick out at the bottom. And you don't want that. So we got to take just a little bit out of that cement board. So in order to rip this down to 33 inches, all we got to do is measure down each side, put a mark at 33, and then take a chalk line and hook on the one side on the one mark and pull it over to the other side on this mark and then strike your line. So we got a rip right down that line. There's a couple different tools you can use to rip down the cement board. One is a diamond blade on a circular saw. Two is this scoring knife. And this works okay, but it creates a lot of junk when you go to cut across, it just throws a lot of cement. But the best thing I've found to use is an oscillating tool. And you can use this and it doesn't throw up too much dust and it doesn't throw a bunch of crumbs of cement around. So all I gotta do now is go ahead and start from this edge and cut right down that line. And always put in ear protection because this can be really loud. And also take note of the plywood that's underneath this piece because you don't want to cut onto your subfloor. So just a scrap piece of sheathing's fine. All right, now we got our piece ripped down. So now I gotta get a little bit cut out of the back for that shower pan lip. So I'm gonna use the oscillating tool to cut the cement board out of the back. So same idea, except we're gonna place this blade into the cement board like this. I'm just gonna stick it right in there about halfway. Through. You just have to go deep enough to compensate for that lift. So now to flip it around on its backside. Now we just gotta cut down about an eighth inch or so and then rip that off there. This is where you gotta be really careful depending on how sharp your oscillating tool is because you can go through it in no time. So now as you can see, there's enough room for the flange of the shower base to go behind the cement board without causing it to bulge. The five foot stuff works great on this back wall. Now when it comes to the side walls, because the dimensions is five foot by three, it's easier just to put this stuff up and stand it up against the wall instead of going long ways. So the five foot piece came clear up to here. And because it's three foot wide, I had the drywaller stop three foot, one half inch. So it'll squeeze into this opening fine. And I'm gonna run my tile past it just a little bit. Now I gotta drill out for the shower head. And in order to do that, all I gotta do is measure up to the center of it. Looks like it's 17 inches and measure over. Looks like it's 15 and a half. I just gotta transcribe that measurement onto the piece of cement board and then drill it out and I'll show you how to do that. Here is where the shower head's coming out at and this is just a standard inch and a quarter drill bit. And now all I gotta do is go ahead and just drill it out. And make sure you have scrap plywood under this for this exact reason. As you can see, it went through and hit a little bit of the plywood that's underneath. One good thing about working from the floor up is you got a lip to set it on so you can hold it easier. For this next step, you're gonna to need to get fiber mesh tape and a utility knife because what we gotta do is tape all the joints and then mud over them with thin set and I'm gonna show you how I do it. I like to start up in the corner, so all you gotta do, pull out a nice little strip of this fiber mesh tape and just tuck it back in where the cement board meets each other. Just run that clear down until you hit the shower pan. Now once I get down to the shower pan, I just take my utility knife and just cut it about where it's gonna meet the pan. And this stuff cuts really easy. And then we just tuck it back into the corner like we were doing above. Now that we applied the fiber mesh tape in the corners, we gotta go through and do the horizontal joints next. And as you notice probably by now is there's a little indention where the joints are and that's to allow a place for mortar to set in here so it comes out flush once it's evened out. So you just do the same thing you did in the corners other than this is flat now. So it's very simple to apply it to these joints because you just put it right over the joint as if you're taping drywall. Keep running it over until you get to the other corner and then we will cut it to where it ends and then just flatten it out 
And I still gotta put mesh tape down this corner, but I just wanted to show you how to run the flats. Now it's time to mix up thin set, and I got the thin set that's made for porcelain. That's because I got porcelain tile that's gonna be going in the shower. And I got water, and I got a bucket to mix it in. And then I got my half inch drill with a mixing blade in order to mix it up. So all we gotta do is go ahead and guesstimate about how much thin set I'm gonna need and put it into a bucket. And now I'm just going to add just a little bit of water to get started. And then I'm going to take my half inch drill with mixing blade and just start mixing it up. Keep slowly adding some water and mixing it up until we got a peanut butter like consistency. I've been mixing this between one to two minutes and as you can see, I got a peanut butter like consistency. Now I gotta let this sit for five to 10 minutes then remix it. About eight minutes have gone by and now I'm gonna remix this up for another couple minutes. Now that I got the thin set mixed up, I have a drywall knife that I've had for years just for thin set. As you can see, it's old and it's had mortar on it before and that's fine. And now I just got a standard mud pan that a lot of people use for drywall, but in this case, I'm gonna be using it for the thin set. So all we gotta do is skip, scoop out a little bit out of the bucket and get ready to start taping and mudding those joints. I'm gonna start up in the corner where I first put on the mesh tape. So all I'm gonna do is just get some mortar on one side of the knife, and then I'm gonna run it down the side of the fiber mesh. And it's just like doing drywall work. You just kind of pack it in and level it out. It's really not that complicated, folks, but it definitely takes a little practice to get used to. So I always go down one side, clean my knife, and then I'll go down the other side. Drywall guy would be great at this job. Typically, you would let one side dry, then do the other side, but since this is just for a tiled shower, it doesn't have to be perfect. For these flats, what I do, I'll just scoop some on my knife like that. Then I'll go through and just pack it into that joint and then just smooth it out like so. If you can do a corner, you can easily do one of these flats. Another very critical place you need to make sure you put thin set is over each screw. Just get a little bit of thin set on your knife and scrape right over it and already did that a couple hours ago. Another important place to make sure you get mortar around is right here where the shower valve is. I went ahead and just stuck tape around it and put mortar around it so that way when we put the waterproofing on, it'll seal right around this square. Also, I did it right up here as well, but this isn't near as critical because the water is going to come out of this shower head and down. The drop ear is right behind the cement board, so we're good to go. Now that the fiber mesh and thin set is installed, I'm going to let this dry overnight and then I'm going to move on to the next step. It's time to address the waterproofing process. So the product I'm going to be using is called Aqua Defense, and this can be found in my Amazon store as well. The link is in the description. And before we get started, I like to mask up around the shower because you don't want this stuff getting all over your shower base. But clearly, if you're doing a mud pan shower, you gotta waterproof that anyways, it wouldn't matter. But in this case, we're gonna mask this shower base. The items you'll need to install the Aqua Defense is a roller with a 3 8 nap, a paint tray, a stir stick, because you gotta stir it thoroughly, and a brush of some kind. And I would typically use a standard paintbrush, but all I had was a foam brush here on site, which it'll work fine as well. So first thing we gotta do is open up our aqua defense. You're gonna notice it's pretty thick, and we're gonna wanna stir it up really well. And it, this stuff is almost like a jello. I'm gonna go ahead and wear some safety goggles because you don't wanna get this stuff in your eyes. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pour it into my paint tray. And just go ahead and paint it on the walls as if you're painting a wall with latex paint. Just like regular paint, the first coat really soaks up into that cement board and your second coat doesn't take nearly as much product to cover. Then after I got a coat rolled on, I just take my brush 
and go into the corners to make sure I get plenty of coverage just as if we were painting walls with latex. But again, I always put it on really thick because you want a good coat, especially in these corners. This is a good place for water to set. I got the first coat of waterproofing on. I'm gonna let this set up for about 30, 40 minutes and then I'm gonna apply a second coat. If you're curious to how much it took to put two coats on this shower, as you can see, I use actually a little less than half or about half of the bucket full to do it. So a bucket this size is going to be plenty for a shower this size. I just got finished applying the waterproofing and I recommend removing the masking and the masking tape now because if you don't, the layer will dry over the masking tape and when you go to pull it off, it's gonna to try to pull off the waterproofing as well. So it's always best practice to remove this while it's fresh. The waterproofing has been drying for about an hour and now I'm gonna install a tile on it. If you need to install the tile, check out this video. It'll help you out. 